A couple of weeks ago, I did a video about a woman who engaged in an explicit phone call with me that was several hours long and then proceeded over the subsequent days to not really do anything to advance the type of relationship she seemed interested in having by virtue of what she said in that call. And this was a turning point for me, one, because I decided to release portions of the audio of this, which is something I've never done in the past, um, and also because the main issue here was that someone said something extremely perverse and then did little to actually advance it, which begged the question of if you can't take them seriously when they say the explicit types of things that she said in that recording that you heard, what can you take seriously? And the response to it was a largely sympathetic crowd, but you had a couple of characters who, despite all of the evidence to show how insane what she said was for someone that apparently wasn't seeking anything romantic with me or otherwise uh, acted that way afterward. These guys were still able to come to her defense. Um, so I've decided to respond to their comments for the purpose of making fun of how ridiculous the arguments are. And also to point out that there are some very interesting parallels between not only these guys, but also ones that we've seen before. So I hope you enjoyed the previous video. Uh, consider this something of a follow-up. And, you know, the, the whole point of making this stuff is to just explain and articulate why there is something wrong with a lot of people, whether that's modern chicks and in some cases modern men like the ones that defend them. So without further ado. I don't think I've done that great of a job explaining what the new era is. For as long as I've made this type of content, I believe that even my detractors have some basic level of humanity in them, that they could be persuaded if you provided enough evidence regarding the ridiculousness of multiple interactions I or others have had with women. And I maintain that most do not engage in conversations with me that are as explicit as the one I recorded, which was my purpose behind releasing snippets of it because it was not normal for one of them to speak to me that way. This also made it all the more frustrating when she inevitably acted disinterested by declining to schedule a call and vaguely saying we would eventually have one amid her attempts to minimize what happened by writing that we only talked once when that wasn't the point. The point was she had a very long, explicit conversation with me that would appear to be the catalyst of future calls and activities. This turned out to not be the case, and I wish I could say I was surprised, but we all know the overdone plot twist of women changing their minds every five seconds, no matter what they said to lead you on. This video isn't about re-examining how nutty what she did was. It concerns the reception to what she did and how insane the defenses are. One of these comments I already addressed in the stream, but not everyone watches those, and there are some particular points that are worth repeating or things I can better explain with visuals. The user I'm referring to goes by the handle 2900SE, and I want to highlight his makeup in terms of his relationship with my channel before we read his trash. YouTube on mobile has a function that allows you to see how many comments an account has left on your channel. In March of this year, I did a romance video titled Romance the New N-Word, who talked about how the I-word was analogous to the N-Word as a term that was offensive, but also used by some people to refer to others in a friendly way because it has no real meaning. On this video, a user who called himself Tony wrote a total of seven comments, and thanks to Mobile, I can assert that he had never left a comment on one of my videos before or since. This is very important to consider because you are already seeing parallels between the two. They are users who disagree with me that have, to some extent, seen my content in the past based on their comments, but were never compelled to write anything before leaving their antagonistic, worthless dribble. Another similarity they have is something they happen to share with many men, which is an inability to address anything I said. In the case of Tony slash Trevor, the closest he comes to responding to what I actually said in the video that he commented on are quoting parts of it to subsequently insult me. Ironically enough, he would later claim during my stream a few days later that he could have addressed what I said, which begs the question of why he didn't do that in the first place. I guess I shouldn't be surprised since he's the same person who bragged about no longer watching my self-loathing and then showed up on my next stream two days later. But 2900, the woman hero, follows the same trend. He does not articulate in his paragraph of goof 
any rebuttal to my proof outside of his feelings, which compel him to side with the woman's decision to take a few steps away from me simply because of her gender. And some people might be confused as to why I believe they need to address what I'm saying, and I'll elaborate. There is a tendency for people who don't address what the video is about to do two things. One, they attack me over my physical appearance, which is irrelevant to my argument in every instance. Two, they put words in my mouth. Tony in his comment wrote that I was self-loathing when I oftentimes talk about how highly I believe in myself and why this motivates me to not allow myself to be treated like some second-class citizen by a random lady who's been given some weird higher value than me on the basis of her gender. The act of putting words in my mouth is done multiple times by 2900, the woman hero. He accuses me of believing I'm the only person in her world and of expecting too much from people. These kind of comments really piss me off, but we need to talk about one more thing before I tear into this. On the Saturday stream I did after Tony wrote a novel in my comment section, the latter claimed that he didn't insult me. I laughed because it showed his mental illness. For someone to believe that they are not insulting you just because they don't call you out of your name is laughable. In his paragraphs, he accused me of being self-loathing, asserted that my content was redundant, and that I lacked introspection. These are not nice or positive things to say about anyone, and it befuddles me that what apparently is a grown man would believe I'm supposed to not take this as an insult. Going back to 2900, the woman hero, do you see how I'm being insulted with slick disses? Imagine if I came up to you and accused you of believing you're the only person in someone's world and you expect too much from others. You would think I was attacking you, which is what these types of comments are doing, just in not as rude a manner as some of the others that I've highlighted. Now, let's talk about why 2900, the woman hero, isn't even worth a breath for me. This prick brings up irrelevant crap like my age and intellect to start off his trash, and then writes, She doesn't have to be locked into anything with you. People can like you one day and not be interested the next. Yes, that's why there's something wrong with them. Let me talk explicitly to a woman, and then not be interested in her a day later. I would be called bipolar, but because she's a woman, her plot armor kicks in. You're not the only person in their world. This part is one of the two that upsets me the most because the act of asking someone when you can have a call with them is admittance of them having responsibilities and other important things in their life that are not you. I sincerely hope you find yourself a nice lady one day. It'll serve you better to not expect so much from anyone. This reminds me of the Stop Promising Just in a Woman video where we gave examples of this magic woman these people keep hyping that has failed to materialize year after year. And maybe that's a good thing because for all I know, I could have a woman agree to date backpedal. And then if I do a video on it, buffoons like this will accuse me of expecting too much. My expectations for every single person I speak to are rooted in what they tell me they will do. If someone says they want to call me twice a week, I expect them to do that. He is literally saying you're wrong to take women at their word while attempting to defend women. What was too much about what I expected? This comment is a riddle and the few parts of it we've solved just make us even more confused. And I'm going to harp on the it'll serve you better to not expect so much from any one part of his used car salesman pitch. In the past, I have had people like this one offer what I term as unsolicited advice, which is them giving their unwanted opinion on what I should do to appeal to women. And a lot of this advice I personally find to be extraneous. You have various men who have urged me to go to the gym for some unspecified amount of time, become rich or very wealthy, etc. And this eventually culminated in me making the I've been criticized for everything video where I showed various comments attacking me over perceived flaws in my personality, some aspect of my appearance, or another nitpick. The point of that video was to show how a coalition of men can expect another man to do extraneous things for something as minor as maybe having one woman show romantic interest in him and then lashing out at this man when he is unable to live up to either women or men's unrealistic fantasies. That's why his comment is so ironic. To paraphrase him, I am the person who people expect so much from. The person that is expected to treat the woman he is interested in as though she is the only person in his world and locked into something with, 
by doing all of these steps for the most minuscule of results. When I first saw this comment, I noticed it had four replies from three different, much more recurring users on my channel. And I waited a week to see if this guy would respond to any of the responses to his trash. Instead, he has vanished like Jimmy Hoffa. I have a term I use called drive-by typing where someone will write something contentious or outright antagonistic and then make sure to not reply to anyone attempting to engage them on their opinion. We can reasonably infer that 2900 The Woman Hero is a drive-by typer, which is his only difference from Tony, who infamously stayed on the channel of someone he claimed to not like for half a year. One of the reasons I hate drive-by typers is because they want a courtesy they will not give you. When someone writes a comment, they want it to be seen by others. They want their view to be read and possibly discussed via someone replying to what they said. Drive-by typers, these people that write comments like this but apparently get lost afterward, want to have their cake and eat it too. They want us to read what they thought about something while completely disregarding what we thought about what they posted. And the last thing this guy has in common with Tony, and this can be said for the next person as well, is what I call new villain syndrome, NVS. I expect to get antagonistic comments from people who just stumble across one of my videos and don't like it. But with these types of people, they have a known past connection to your content and they write something antagonistic as their first comment, which is all the more bizarre when you consider that they apparently didn't like the type of stuff you made in the past, but felt compelled to keep watching you anyway. If it was someone like Tina or Megumi or Envoy or Akatsuki Merchant, people who regularly support my channel and content that wrote the types of comments these two did, maybe I would take them seriously. But it's hard to care about the opinions of people who have proven that they couldn't care less about your channel, which they have demonstrated by leaving little to no comments before writing their garbage. And that's not to say that a new person can have a valid disagreement, but there is a strong correlation between these weird antagonistic comments and the person being someone you've never seen before. The other comment did not enjoy the longevity of the first one, but it's just as goofy. Motivation Inspiration writes, Women make no sense, but Dustin, when she was calling you a dummy, I think she was playing around, should have played around back. It's typical for women to ghost for a bit and come back later, just have to give them that space. Also, Justin, most women don't set up calls or dates. The first part of this comment that's whack is the assertion that I did not play around back. As I mentioned during the video, this call was several hours long. You have to be insane to believe that I was not exchanging banter with this woman for that call that lasts as long as it did. He claims it is typical for a woman to ghost for a bit and that I just have to come back later and give them that space. In the video, I referenced a woman who agreed to marry me, a proposal I only made because her religion barred me from dating her only for her to renege after a few days, which was followed by me spending three months talking to her on the premise that she would possibly change her mind. I cited this as the rationale for not giving women these extended periods of time to not progress our communication in any way. I have met plenty of women that have no problem scheduling a call and subsequent ones, so I don't buy his unsubstantiated claim that this is just what women do. This lady was given almost a full week to just schedule a phone call, which if she did would signify that she was trying to talk to me. I'm not going to sit here and wait for someone to decide they're interested in me after wasting weeks and months of my time again. The last part of this is him claiming that most women don't set up calls or dates. I can attest to most of them not approaching men, but I guarantee you he doesn't have a shred of evidence that most of them will not set up a call. Again, I have met plenty of them who, if they want to speak to you, will tell you when they are available. So his comment is less pretentious than the one 2900 The Woman Hero wrote, but just as antagonistic. When I did the video from two weeks ago, I made it for the purpose of showing how a woman could say something very explicit to you and then not pursue this. In having the recording in it, I wanted it to be understood that if a woman could say what she said and still show little to no interest afterward, what could they ever say that you could believe meant they were actually interested? It's not a hard rationale to comprehend, but I suppose when you're obsessed with being antagonistic to me, you find a way to deflect from my point. 
That's why I call this the new era, because now I truly understand that there will always be insane men that usually come out of nowhere to defend women they've never met, no matter how screwed up the act was or how much proof I have. I know that no one would defend me if I said explicit things to a woman and then kept refusing to schedule a phone call over an almost week-long period prior to insulting her as well. I would be called an inconsiderate prick who led her on before wasting her time. I'm just a man who's tired of ridiculous, repetitive, time-wasting women, which is why I don't really see a need for a love life if nothing comes out of it aside from being led on by women who are then used as ammo for men to make personal attacks on me. It needs to die.